What's going on, Indian crew? Welcome back. Oh. Welcome back to another video. Alright guys, in this video I'm going to be running you through the steps that I take to put my dats in here away for winter storage. And no, these winter tires in the frame here, they're not going on the Datsun. The Datsun is not being winter driven. Um, I'd be curious to see how it would drive, but no, I'm definitely not uh, going to be doing that, putting my 40 year old car um, through ice, snow, and all that uh, fun stuff. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just j dive right in um, and we'll, we'll go, I'll run you through the steps. Alright guys, so where I'm located, I got about five to six months of downtime every single year with the Datsun. Now realistically, this is the first year that I've had the car pretty much in a state where I wasn't going to be doing a massive overhaul over the winter. Um, so it's going to be a little bit different uh, steps that I take that I've done in the past. We're not going to be working on the Datsun this year. I actually don't have any spot to be working on the Datsun. I literally just have this spot here to park it. There's going to be no room to work. None of that stuff that I've had in the past. So we'll be running you through how to set up your car where you're going to be storing it for long periods of time without actually um, driving it or doing any work on it. You'll set it up, you'll leave it there, and then you'll kind of revisit everything back um, for in this case would be the springtime. So the first thing we're going to talk about is um, filling up the car with a fresh tank of fuel or making sure that the gas tank is full. Now a lot of these things I'm going to talk about are probably going to have a lot of um, back and forth in the comments of people that have heard um, things that uh, are different than what I'm telling you. So this is just what I do, this is what I've done in the past, I've never ran into any issues doing things this way, but I just want to say that this may not be the right way, there might be a lot of, uh, not conspiracies, but a lot of other theories um, in regards to storing your car for a long period of time. So I just want to get that out there. As a disclaimer before we start. So in terms of going back to the fuel, we're going to make sure that the car has a full tank of gas. Now here's my rationale behind it. During uh, the winter time here you have a period of drastic temperature change. So I like to have a full tank of gas that way the temperature change doesn't cause or doesn't allow for condensation to build up in the side, inside the tank. If the tank is completely full, there'll be less room for condensation to build. So that's my theory there. If you have a full tank of gas, there should be less condensation and therefore water mixing in with the fuel. Now in theory, um, it might not really affect the amount of condensation that you get, it might not even affect anything. I always say might as well fill it up with a fresh tank of fuel, um, that way next year when you start uh, driving again, you have a fresh tank and you're good to go. Now if you're going to be storing the car for very, very long, like I would say multiple years, um, that might be a different story where you can kind of approach it a different way, um, just because the fuel might go stale, which we will talk about next. Um, so that might just be a different approach. So it's all variable depending on your specific situation. Next, we're going to talk about fuel stabilizer. Now, I have a bunch of bottles of fuel stabilizer over here. Actually, let me let me grab one. This is some fuel stabilizer that I have. Um, now, I will not be putting fuel stabilizer in the Datsun. Um, you guys might think I'm crazy. Um, my theory on this is that I believe that a lot of the gas, when it is um, actually um, I don't know what word I'm looking for here. When it is when it is being refined, that's the word. When gas is being refined and is being brought to its finished product, I believe <clears throat> most um, most fuel has uh, their own additives and things already in it. In it, I can't speak today. Most fuel, when it's being refined after that process, I believe has additives in it. You see all the commercials, for example, Shell, again, this might not be in your area, but local to us, they, there's commercials promoting that there's different additives in there, things like that. So I don't add any extra thing to my fuel. I don't add anything extra. I don't add like uh, uh, the, the 
shit that you put in your line so the fuel lines don't freeze, whatever the hell it's called. I can't think of anything today. Um, obviously, my the car will not be going <clears throat> will not be going outside. The garage is heated, um, not always heated though. Um, we just turn it on whenever we're working in the garage. Um, but I will not be adding this in. I believe, again, there's additives already in the fuel. I've never had any issues in the past. Again, this isn't for an extremely long period of time we're talking. We're talking four to six months maximum. Um, so again, depending on the length, your results may be different than what I've seen. And depending on where you live in the world, your fuel might be different than the fuel that we have here. Not drastically different, but slightly. Okay? so. You can tear me apart, shred me apart in the comments, but the Datsun's not getting any fuel stabilizer, fuel additives. It's going straight from the pump in the tank. We're leaving it that way. Okay, on to the next thing. We're actually gonna be talking about tires here. Um, before we do that though, just one quick tip. Might not be a bad idea to go through the car and pull anything out that um, you, know, you might need, sunglasses, things like that. Um, that way, if you're gonna be driving another car for the winter, you can put all that stuff in there. Now the Datsun, in my case, it doesn't have much in it, so we're not gonna to have to clean out or do anything in that respect. Let's talk back to tires. So leaving a car um, on its tires for a long period of time can cause flat spots in certain cases. Um, the Datsun's not really heavy, but still, you can still have flat spots. Um, so what we're gonna do, we actually have these things right here. Woo! So these things are race ramps, is what they're called, um, or flat stoppers. So ultimately, it's just a ramp that is curved, so the tire will sit on here and it'll evenly distribute the weight um, so it's not just on one point of the tire. That's, in theory, how this works. Um, so you shouldn't, in theory, have flat spots in your tires with this. Now, in the past, I've never used these. Um, reason being is, again, I was always working on the car. The car was always up on jack stands over the winter. I never had to worry about that. Now, a lot of people might say, well, why don't you just lift the car up, take the pressure off of the tires, and then you'll be good to go. There's a lot of theories behind that as well in regard to leaving the suspension in full droop. It may not be best for the suspension components, um, but again, these are a lot of theories that are up for speculation. So we're gonna be using the race ramp method. Problem with this is once you put these on, once you drive the car onto these, you're not really gonna be moving the car that much. So again, in the past, I've never used these. I, this is the first year where the Datsun is literally just gonna be sitting in one spot. So these should work. Um, we'll run you through the process of these uh, shortly. All right guys, before we move forward with all my steps, I just wanna take a quick quick second to talk about the race ramps that I just mentioned. So I have a few things um, set up on the car right now that we're just gonna go through. Um, some of you might not know how to set up race ramps. It's fairly straightforward and simple, but I'm just gonna, just gonna go through it, okay? So just bear with me or you can skip a little bit. You can skip. All right, so for the race ramps, this is ultimately what you would do. On all four corners, you'd put your race ramp in front of the tire, start the car, drive it up, and you'd be okay. Um, obviously, if we do that right now, the car is gonna be through the toolbox right there, so we're not gonna be doing that. So what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna have this right here um, as a guide. I'm gonna pull the one out of the back, and then we're just going to uh, drive the car back a little bit, till it hits right about here. Um, and then that's where we'll know at least um, once we start, we'll move this in front of the car and then we'll be good to go. Fairly straightforward. Ultimately, you just wanna make sure that you give yourself enough room in front so you're obviously, when you get onto the race ramp, you're not going to be um, hitting or going through anything or being in the wrong spot. Once you get them on there, you're fairly stationary. Obviously, if it's not what you want, you can always back them off of it. That's totally fine. Um, but again, before you start driving your car up, you wanna make sure that each ramp is on all four corners. Okay? All right. So, with this aside, 
The only other thing I'm really gonna talk about, actually two more things, we'll wrap up really quick, cause I hate, I know you guys hate when I keep rambling on. So we'll talk about two final things. Once you have the car situated on the race ramps, you have everything out of it that you, that you need, the car is full of fuel, um, the next step is going to be removing the battery. Um, I do that in my case, this is a 40 year old car so I can actually take the battery right out. I'll explain in a little bit more detail. Um, the Datsun here, as it's as old as it is, the battery can come right out because there's not a lot of extra components that rely on that battery <clears throat> in terms of saving certain settings, in terms of certain specific systems in the car that need and require um, having a lap power um, going to that. So on this car, we're actually gonna be removing the battery. I'm gonna be storing it, um, and I'm also gonna be putting it on a tender. That's something that you should do. Um, if you don't have like a battery tender, you can kind of charge it like I would say every like, every month, you can put it on like a, uh, like a charger, slow charge, triple charge overnight. Um, I wouldn't suggest leaving the trickle charge on, for example, over the six months, four to six months that you have the car off the road. Just maybe set it up in your calendar so you can put the battery overnight on um, a trickle charge. And then obviously you charge it before you put the car, put the battery back in the car for the next season. Now, if you have a newer vehicle that you're storing, I wouldn't suggest taking the battery right out of the car. What I'd suggest is leaving the battery in the car. That way all those settings, those presets that you have are saved. All those systems that are in the car that require that power can have that power. In some cases, taking the battery completely out, disconnecting power fully from your car system, um, sometimes actually requires dealership intervention in terms of setting that back up properly when you put the battery back in. And now this, I'm not talking every new car. It could be like higher, higher end cars, like supercar um, level. Um, but that being said, if you have a new car, that would be the best route to go. Um, I would just suggest setting up a trickle charger or a battery saver. They have more like high end ones. They're really small. Um, and you can just wire it right into, you can keep the hood popped a little bit and have the wire um, run right into the engine bay or if the battery's in the trunk, wherever it is, you can set it up uh, that way. Um, and then you just have to turn it on again every couple weeks, once a month, however often you want to do that just to make sure the battery is in good state. Um, lastly, we're going to talk about covering the car. This is very simple. Um, you don't have to have a cover on your car, but there is an extra spot in the garage right where I'm standing. We're gonna have a car moving in and out almost daily. So I would say having the fact that there's gonna be people walking around and cars moving in and out. There's gonna be movement in here. It's not gonna be like, a, it's not like a barn or a shop that like I'm locking for the winter and then not returning for months. So because there's gonna be movement in here, I'm gonna be covering the car. I have a car cover just over here. This is car covers in this bag. So what we're gonna be doing is covering it. It's fairly straightforward. What I may suggest you do though, before you cover the car, is just give the car a quick wipe down with like a quick detail spray. Uh, if you wanna fully wash the car, you can. It's at the point right now in our area where it's fairly cold. So we're not gonna be doing that. Um, but you do have the option um, to wash the car if you can. Uh, that would probably be best, but you can always just use like a fast wax, quick detail or something like that. The inside of the bag is fairly like felty, like soft. Won't necessarily scratch the paint, but if you do have like some dust, some dirt and debris on the car, there is that potential when you're actually like getting the, um, the cover onto the car. So that's just something to keep in mind. Once you have all that done, should be good to go, your car should be ready. Again, there's just a few things that you kinda have to remember throughout the winter just to be making sure that you're charging the battery. Um, but other than that, you should be good to go. All right guys, you just saw the car on the race ramps covered with the battery out of it. It's got a fresh tank of fuel. That's pretty much it for this video. Those are the steps that I take to put my car away for a long period of time, in this case, winter. I hope you guys liked the video. Subscribe for more. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you know when these videos get released to you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace out and stay classy, crew. So we call first try. That was actually second try.
Turns the lining and everything up. Came out real good, boy.